This is my house now, and this is my house at the end of the video. And these are 31 ways to make your house look good. And hey, the YouTube judge bets me that you can't subscribe to the channel with your eyes closed. So to prove them wrong, take a blind guess at that sub button down below. It's free and it ups out a ton. Now, the first step in taking this wooden cube up a notch is gonna be to add in some pillars like so. That way they look more supportive when we start to get to the roof and such. And as any builder will tell you, that's not the only kind of depth that we can add to our walls. Because next, we gotta talk about a wall facade, which is really just a fancy way of saying that we're adding in stairs and slabs so that the walls start to pop a little bit more from the supports. Even now that we've got these new pillars and wall facade, it's still just a cube. So to fix that, the easiest way to make your house into a complex shape is to add on more simple shapes like so. Even if we're just mixing together more rectangles and squares as the base, when you combine them all together, that'll make the house look a lot more like a unique shape without making it any more difficult to build. Now that we're adding in more walls and parts to the house, we want to avoid using the same blocks for each one of the walls. Because if you zoom out, it really starts to look samey from out here. So instead, let's take this idea of using a linear pattern like so to break up the texture. Let's take our attention from the walls of the house down to the floor. Because while we could use a standard carpet, I think that by adding in other blocks that are the same color as the carpet blocks, we start to get a new texture to it. You could even use a mix of carpet and wool blocks to add in different height levels to the carpet. Now that we've cleaned up level one, let's take it up a level, or that is to level two of the house. But to even get there, we're gonna need a new set of stairs. And while a standard two wide staircase is iconic, I think this user's design looks a lot nicer than that. And it's the same cost. Because by just placing these stairs on the outside facing inward, we get a natural railing to the stairs, which lets us get up to the second floor so that we can start on our roof. We're gonna wanna do something a little bit more unique than just the standard staircase design. And the easiest way to avoid your building looking like a triangle is to mix in a use of whole blocks and slabs instead of just regular stair steps. And speaking of which, now that we've got the roof done, this house is really starting to come together. But a house isn't all that good if you're not able to sleep in it, so let's deal with that next. And as you can probably guess, I'm not a fan of just placing your bed out in the open. So instead, let's take our standard bed and add some function to it. By using this user's design, we can place our bed up here, have it look like a bunk bed, but then still have all the space consolidated for a crafting table, barrel storage, and even a lectern if you want. Oh, and don't worry, this lantern that we're adding here isn't the only light source that we plan to add. And luckily, if we craft a few more lanterns, we can use these as a unique way to light up the base. By just using a mix of levers, item frames, and chains, we can make make it look like the lanterns are held up by the wall instead of hanging in midair. And once we place in the last lantern, our base is really starting to look like something from the inside. But there's still work to be done on the outside of the base. The best way to do that will be adding in vegetation blocks. And we could do this with a mix of vines, leaves, or flowers. But let's not make these with bone meal and saplings. But rather, let's break down those bone meal trees and use the materials to make a few custom ones of our own. By using oak wood instead of oak logs, we can keep the bark texture on all sides and have our tree look a lot more realistic when we make unique trunk like so. And then if we add in different slabs and fences like this user does, we can mix in plenty of variety to our branches, which lets us make a nice looking custom tree at basically any size that you want. And for an extra bonus tip, you can go even further and use your custom trees with walls instead. No joke, from a distance, diorite walls look like birch logs, and that'll let us create these extra thin trees to line up the base. And I think the last bit of vegetation that we should add to our house is a pretty lawn outside of the base. We can break up this monotony by using moss blocks and grass blocks in tandem. Since with a mix of these, we can make it look as if we mowed the lawn in nice stripes. This is what our house looked like at the beginning of the video, and this is what it looks like now. But the other parts of our base are severely lacking. So let's head over to our mine first and get that fixed up. And to even get over there in the first place, let's start to build out a nice looking path that'll take us right from our lawn over to what's gonna be our quarry. We gotta make this look as good as our house does. And first to do that, we're gonna need to clean up the staircase. So as we widen the staircase to dig down into the mines, we can choose to mix up the staircase blocks with extra details that line the actual stairs, such as slabs, candles, or even upside down stairs like this for an alternating pattern. And once we've made that staircase down to the bottom of the branch mine, let's start to clean up this tunnel, because with just a few support beams like this, we can make it look as if the roof isn't about to cave in anytime soon. And now that we've completely changed the underground, let's head up to the surface, because there's still one change left that I want to make. Because while our stairs look great, we do still need to house them in something. Otherwise, they're just going to look out of place. And the best way to do that is by adding in a biome-specific entrance to the mine. That way, we're not just leaving an open tunnel or quarry, but instead, it looks like we dug into the ground with a purpose. And after digging all those blocks down in the mine, we can put those materials to use and start to upgrade our farm as well. But by this point, I think we deserve a better way across the water than just swimming over there. So let's give ourselves a simple bridge to connect the path. And for that, I think this design using extinguished campfires should do the trick. We could even turn them around and add some different orientation to their wood planks, which definitely looks nicer than having a one wide spruce plank bridge over the water. Even though our new bridge looks great, it 
doesn't lead to that pretty of a farm. Hey, well, it looks awkward to have our farmland out and about like this. If we add in trapdoors around the plots, then we can make it look like planters boxes. And that even gives us a way to compartmentalize our different crops, which is functional, but it's still too clean for the farm. So to add in some extra realism, let's plant our crops in a row like this. That way we use the dirt on either end of the farming rows to look like the walking lanes that you use to tend to the crops. We still need a place to hold our farming tools and seeds. And for that, I think adding in a little storage shed like this will make it look a lot nicer than just having our chests and barrels out in the open. And personally, I like this idea of using signs for an extra depth off the back, and all the while having it look like wooden planks are holding together the back of the barrel. And now, for the centerpiece of this whole farm, let's build ourselves a nice big windmill, which will not only give us a place to sleep for some safety out there, but it can also give us a proper spot to house the different animals that we'll need in the farm. And after adding our cows into a farm on their own, let's go one step further and place down this design for an industrial-sized milk tank, which will not only fit in with the different kind of redstone farms that we might build, but it also gives us a use for any of the copper that we might have grabbed while we were digging out the mine. But with all of that built, we're still gonna need a place to store our stuff. So let's build out a new warehouse building to keep all of the items that we've been collecting. And then once we've got our exterior done, we can go inside and add in this new expandable storage system. Now, what we've got here uses redstone comparators to give an indication of the chest capacity. So whether we're storing a bunch of cobblestone from our mining trip or a load of wheat from the new farm, this will give us an indicator of how many of the chests that we've filled up. And to make it even more clear what we've got inside, let's sneak a couple of these in. By mixing an item frame with a sign, we can choose to label our chest with both text and a visual indicator of the block inside, almost giving ourselves a pop-up book effect. And make sure to save a few more of those item frames, because if we choose to put those in between the chests like this, it'll look as if they're glued together. And when you've got a big row of chests like we got here, that'll make those tiny gaps in between them a lot less noticeable. And while that all helps to make our bulk storage look the best, what about our valuables? Let's step outside and I'll show you this new trap door, which if we flip like so, can grant us access into a new secret basement. That way we can still keep all of our goods within the storage building, but we don't have to be too obvious about it. And that'll give us the perfect place to keep all this netherite that we're crafting up. Or rather, the netherite that we would craft if we had a nether portal. So let's fix that problem. And to do that, we're gonna need two things to show off. A supersized nether portal and a supersized hallway to get us to that nether portal. And as we dig out the tunnel to build this new nether portal, we can line the walls of the cave with all the different tips that we learned from earlier. Pillars for support, hanging lanterns, the whole nine yards. And once we reach the end, it's finally time to build out our new centerpiece, the nether portal. Now, personally, I like the idea of blending in the nether portal with a facade. And once we've blended it in, our nether portal really looks like something to see. But we can't just have it look good on the overworld side. So let's head through and teleport over to the nether as well. And if we're gonna pretty up the other dimension, I love this idea of having the nether side mirror what we build in the overworld. Almost as if we're walking into a parallel dimension. And while it is gonna double the amount of blocks that we're using here, the results are clearly worth it. And once we've done that, we can head out of our new nether portal, grab ourselves the ancient debris, and then finally craft it for the netherite that we need in the valuables room. Oh, and maybe save a few extra ingots for your netherite tools, because this next step is gonna be our biggest yet. Because we're gonna take what we learned and make this house even bigger. Bigger. As any worthwhile builder will tell you, having an impressive spectacle is just as important as the little details. So that's why we could take these new skills and start to supersize our base, which is not only going to be useful for wowing your friends, but it also makes for a better before and after on your building tutorial. Here's how our base looked at the start, and here's how it looks today. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, alright?